Amazon Simple Queue Service or SQS in short is a fully managed message queuing service. It allows us to decouple applications and build distributed systems. With SQS, we can offload tasks from one component of our application by sending messages to the queue and processing them asynchronously in a different application. AWS Lambda Functions is an easy way to start listening to messages coming into the queue and start processing them. Lambda Functions easily allows us to scale up and down depending on the messages coming into the queue. In this video, let's learn all about SQS Lambda triggers. We will learn how to build a Lambda function to process SQS messages. We will learn how to set up to trigger based on messages coming into the SQS queue. We will learn the different configurations associated with these Lambda triggers and see how the Lambda scales up when we have a lot of messages in the queue. We will also explore what happens when there are exceptions when processing these messages and how to handle them inside your Lambda functions and within Amazon AWS itself. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Azure, AWS and DevOps. Now this video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. I highly recommend checking it out, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Without much delay, let's jump straight into learning all about AWS Lambda SQS trigger. Here, I have my AWS console. So let's navigate into my simple queue service, which is there in the recently visited, or you can use the top bar and search for SQS and navigate to simple queue service from there. Here, I already have a queue created, which is the user data changes. Now I will be using this to explore AWS Lambda triggers. Now, if you're completely new to SQS, I highly recommend checking out my video on getting started with SQS, where I walk through from creating a brand new SQS and exploring the different properties on the SQS itself. Now, this video is more on the AWS Lambda side and the trigger configurations. So let's navigate into this queue by clicking in. Here, we can see the details of the SQS queue. It shows that it's of type standard, shows the URL and the ARN. If you want to see more properties, you can expand this. Let's hide this back again. Now to set up a Lambda trigger, we can come down to the bottom tabs and select Lambda triggers and select configure Lambda function trigger. Now this pops up a new window to select a Lambda function. Now I don't have any existing Lambda functions, so let's build one first. Now since I will be building this in .NET, let's navigate to Visual Studio. So here I have Visual Studio open, so let's create a new project and let's select AWS Lambda project. Now I have this template here because I have installed the AWS toolkit. Now, if you're completely new to building Lambda functions, I highly recommend checking out my video on getting started with Lambda functions, which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. Now let's select this and select next. Let's give our function a name. So let's call this as user data dash SQS trigger. Let's make sure it's in the appropriate folder and let's click create. Now this prompts up to select a blueprint. Now this is nothing but a basic template for the Lambda function. Now you can get started by using an empty function, but in this case, since we want to listen to SQS messages, we have a template just for that. So you can select the simple SQS function, which is a project for responding to SQS event notifications. So let's select that and click finish. Now, even if you select the empty project, you can set all this up back again. I will show you exactly the components of this template. Now we have the function created. So let's open solution explorer. And here we have the function.cs. Inside this, we can see there is a new function getting created and we have the function handler method. Now this takes in an SQS event class and also a Lambda context. The SQS event class represents an SQS event. If we navigate to that using F12, we can see the different properties inside SQS event. Now you can see there is a list of records, which is basically of type SQS message. SQS message is defined here and it has the message ID, the body, and the other metadata that's associated with an SQS message. So if we come back to the functions, we can see we loop through all the event records and process each of these message independently. In this case, all we are doing is simply logging it into the logger, the message body. 
and saying it is completed. Now, based on your application and the kind of message you're listening to, the processing and the business logic would be different. So let's leave the process message async like this. Now, if you expand the dependencies inside the project and look at the packages, we can see we have three packages. One is the AWS Lambda.core, the serialization for the system text for the Lambda, and also the Lambda SQS events. Now, this is the library that gives us the SQS event class. Now, if you were building it from scratch using an empty function, it would already have the core and the Lambda serialization libraries. The only one you would need to add extra would be the SQS events. In an SQS event, since we can be getting multiple records, let's also log the number of records we are getting in each of these events. This will be helpful when we debug and look at the CloudWatch logs. So let's again use the context.logger and log information and specify received messages of count and say the count itself. So let's use string interpolation. So let's start with a dollar here and record the event dot records dot count property. Now, every time an SQS event is processed, it will log the number of messages it's received as well. We can control the number of records we get in the SQS event when we set up the Lambda trigger, which we will see shortly. Now, when building out your function, if you want to test this locally, you can put a breakpoint here and use the mock Lambda test tool. Now, this is already wired up using the template. So if we run this, it's going to launch a website where you can invoke this Lambda function using different inputs. Now, this is the mock Lambda test tool, and you can see it's already wired up to our function handler. To simulate an SQS event, we can navigate to the example request and scroll down and select SQS from the list. Now, as you can see, this is simply a JSON record, and you can see there's a records property which has multiple messages inside this. So if we click execute function, it's going to hit the breakpoint with the records that we have just sent it. Now, if you look at the count, this is one in this particular case. So this loops through this message and logs this particular message's body. This is very useful when you want to locally test your Lambda function triggers. Now let's stop this and deploy this Lambda function into our AWS account. To do that, let's open Solution Explorer, right-click on the project, and say publish to AWS Lambda. Now this again is available inside Visual Studio because I have installed the AWS toolkit. I have also configured the toolkit to be connected to my AWS account using the AWS credentials here. Now, if you're completely new and you don't have this already set up, I highly recommend checking out my AWS credentials video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. So let's choose a function name. So in this case, let's use this as the same function name. So let's give this user data dash SQS dash trigger and let's select next. In here, we can choose a role. So let's give this a basic Lambda execution role. So let's use AWS Lambda basic execution role which provides permissions to CloudWatch. Now, once we deploy this into AWS, we will set up the SQS Lambda trigger. So let's click upload, which uploads this into my account. The Lambda function is successfully deployed. So let's navigate back to the AWS console. Let's open a new tab for the console and navigate to Lambda. We have one Lambda function here. This is the one that we've just deployed, which is the user data SQS trigger. So if we navigate further into this, we can see the details of this Lambda function. Now to set up a Lambda trigger with the SQS, you can either choose the Lambda function from here. So if we refresh this page again, we will get to choose the new Lambda function that we have just deployed, or we can also set it up under the Lambda function itself. Now these are two different places to set up the exact same configuration. Now under the Lambda, if you navigate to configuration and triggers, you can set up a trigger for the Lambda inside here as well. Now a Lambda can have multiple triggers. So if you want to use this same Lambda function in different ways, you can do that as well. So let's click add trigger, choose a service. In this case, it will be SQS. So let's select that and let's choose the SQS queue. Now this already shows the user data changes from my account. So let's select that. Let's say enable trigger. And here we can see two more properties. One is the batch size and the batch window. Now the batch size is the largest number of records that will be read from your stream 
at once. Basically, this is the number of records that we will be getting inside the SQS event. Now, what we are specifying here is the maximum size and it doesn't ensure that you will always be getting this number. So if you've specified 10, you could get one, two or anyway up until 10 messages inside that SQS event. So depending on the number of messages that's coming into your SQS, it will be batched and sent to the Lambda function to process. For now, let's leave both of these to the defaults and let's click add. Now this tries to set up the Lambda trigger to the SQS. However, this Lambda function does not have permissions to talk to this SQS queue. So when we try to save, we get an error message saying we do not have a permission for receiving messages on this SQS. So let's update the Lambda configuration to give permission for this. So let's again open this in a new tab. Let's navigate to our Lambda function again. Under configuration, you can go to permissions and select the role name. Now this is the default role that was created when we uploaded the Lambda function. So since we had chosen the AWS basic Lambda execution role, you can see this role by default has that policies attached. Now when setting up Lambda triggers, we need three permissions. So if you look at the documentation, we can see there is the receive message, delete message and get queue attributes. So the receive message allows us to receive the message from the queue. Once this is processed, we want to be able to remove the message from the queue because of which we need to delete the message. We also need to get the queue attributes so that we can see what the default queue permissions and attributes are like the visibility timeout, etc. So let's make sure to set up these three permissions on this Lambda. So let's navigate back. Let's expand the read and let's say receive message. Inside the write, let's choose the delete message and let's also choose the get queue attributes option. So in this case, we are setting up the least required permissions for this Lambda to have a trigger from the SQS. So let's choose these three properties. Let's specify the ARN so that this is only for the specific queue. So let's click add ARN. And let's navigate to the SQS and copy the ARN for that. So let's copy this and let's come back to our IAM and paste this in here and click add. Now these permissions are restricted to just that SQS. So let's click review policy and let's give this a name. So let's say user data changes trigger SQS policy and click create policy. So this creates the new policy. So now if we come back to our Lambda function and click add again, this is going to successfully add the SQS trigger. So we can see the SQS trigger is successfully added. Now this is still in the creating process. And once this is done, it will come back to enabled. So let's refresh this. And now we have this as enabled. Now to test the integration, let's go to monitor and let's click view logs in CloudWatch. So this opens up the CloudWatch that's associated with this Lambda function. Now, since this Lambda function hasn't run yet, there is no log groups under this. So let's navigate to the SQS and let's send a new message. So let's click the send message by adding in a body. So let's say test and click send message. Now this is going to send a message into our SQS, which would have triggered our Lambda function and it would have got this message. So let's navigate into CloudWatch again and refresh this. And we can see there is a new log stream. So if we navigate further into that, we can see this has received message of count one and the processed message and our message body, which was test. So now if we come back to the SQS and let's send a couple more of these messages by clicking this again. And if we come back to CloudWatch and refresh this, we can see this will get triggered as and when the messages come. Now, in all of these cases, you can see the count is one. So the messages were being processed as soon as it arrived into the queue. Now, since there is a delay, when we are clicking these send message button, the messages comes into the queue one by one. So the messages are getting processed as soon as it is arriving. So now if we come back to our Lambda function and go to configuration and under the triggers, if we edit this Lambda trigger, so let's click edit, we can update the batch size and also the batch window. Now the batch window is the maximum amount of time to gather records before invoking the functions. Now this is in seconds. 
So if we specify a value of 10 seconds, it will wait for 10 seconds to reach this batch size or send all the messages that it has received after that 10 seconds. So for example, if we have only sent two messages, it would wait for 10 seconds to see if there would be 10. If not, it would just send those two messages to our Lambda function. So let's update the batch window. So let's make this as 10 and let's click save. Now, even with this setting, it's not guaranteed that you would always get 10 or the number of messages that's getting batched up. Now, this is because there are multiple processes from the Lambda which are polling this SQS queue. Now, depending on which process gets these messages, it would be batching on their side. So if five different processes are polling onto the queue, and if we send five messages, maybe all five would get one each. So in this case, you would really start seeing these numbers only when you have large amounts of messages in your SQS. But let's try this from the UI again and see if there is any change. So if we come back to SQS, let's click the send message again a few times within that 10 seconds batch window. Let's navigate back into CloudWatch and let's refresh this. Now, if we scroll down, you can see we have more number of messages. So here, in this case, it says received messages of count four and it is processing all these four messages. Now you can scroll down and in this case, we've received eight and another one five. So the batch size is batching up all these messages and sending them as a batch to our Lambda function. In this case, we are processing each record one by one. Once we have the batch, we loop through the records in our Lambda function and we process them independently. Now, if we navigate back to the log group, we can see there is still only one log stream, which means we only have one Lambda function that's currently processing these messages. You can also see this under the Lambda function. So if we navigate back to the Lambda function, let's navigate to the monitor and under the metrics tab, if we scroll down, we can see the number of concurrent executions. In this case, this is always one because only one Lambda function instance was processing the message from the queue. So let's send a bulk of messages to the queue and see what happens. To bulk send messages, I have a script already written, which I will be executing using Linkpad. Now this is a good tool to run simple scripts. So I have this script already written. In this script, I'm creating a new instance of the SQS client and I'm creating 100 messages using the send message batch request entry and it giving this the test and the ID of that particular request. So in this case, this will be from one to 100. Now I'm sending this as a batch of 10 using the SQS client and the send message batch async method. So this is the queue URL of our user data changes and this sends the full batch to that. So before running, so let's navigate back into our CloudWatch. Let's delete this existing log stream. So let's click delete so that we can see exactly what is happening. So now if I come back into Linkpad and run this, it's going to send 100 messages into our queue. Now this is already sent this, so let's navigate back and refresh this. Now as the messages come in, it will be picked up by our Lambda to process this. Now you can see here we have five different Lambda log streams created. This is because we have five concurrent invocations of that Lambda functions. Now, since there were 100 messages suddenly coming into the queue, the Lambda functions automatically scaled up and created five different instances. Now, if we navigate into one of them, we can see this has received a count of 10 and this has received multiple batches of that. Now, if we navigate back again, you can see the different Lambda functions would have got different invocations. So if you navigate into this, this one only got 10. So if we navigate into the last one, you can see that one also got 10. So the entire load of messages was split across these five Lambda functions. So if we come back to our Lambda function under the monitor metrics, so let's refresh this and we can scroll down and we can see the concurrent executions have changed. Now in this particular case, we have five concurrent executions. So because we had bulk of messages coming into it, Lambda automatically scaled the number of instances. Now, if we are going to send more messages, so let's say we are going to send 500 of these messages. So let's click run again, which is going to send 500 messages into our SQS. Now this is again going to trigger this Lambda function. Now, once this has processed through all these messages, we can see how many log streams were created. 
Now, since this already has this 5, it would be processing against this 5, or it might also create new Lambda instances. So if we refresh this, we still have 5. So it looks like the load was shared with these 5 instances itself. But if you get a huge amount of messages again, which these 5 ones cannot process fast enough, there will be more instances created from the Lambda. So let's navigate back into the metrics and let's refresh this. And this is still showing 5 in here. The number of Lambda functions that gets created can also be controlled. So if we navigate back to the Lambda function under the configuration, if we go to concurrency, we can set up these values here. So right now, this is set up to use unreserved account concurrency. So this basically ties back to the account, or you can also specify using a specific value, which would be the number of functions at which this would be throttled. Now you'll have to make sure you choose based on your application requirements and the number of messages that comes into your queue. For now, let's leave this as the default. Now that we have seen a successful processing of an SQS message, let's see what happens when there is an exception when processing a message. Now, in all these cases, we saw that the messages were getting successfully processed. This was because we were not doing anything inside our process message async. But in a real world application, it wouldn't be this simple. We would be talking to external services, writing business logics inside our function, and we might encounter some issues, which might throw exceptions inside this process message async. So let's simulate one such scenario and see what happens. So let's add an if loop inside here. So inside the message body, so let's say if message dot body dot contains the word exception in this case let's throw an exception so let's check for that and let's simply throw a new exception so let's say message cannot be processed and let's simply end there so anytime the message contains the word exception this will fail to process so let's deploy this to our AWS Lambda. So let's use the Solution Explorer, publish AWS Lambda. Since all our settings are already there, let's simply click Upload. Now this will package this new Lambda function and upload it to our Lambda function. So this is all done. So let's navigate back to our AWS Lambda. Let's go into CloudWatch. Let's select all the existing CloudWatch log streams and let's delete that so that we clearly can see what is happening. So once that is all deleted, let's navigate back to our SQS. Let's navigate into the queue and choose send and receive messages. So let's say test exception and click send message. Now, whenever this is going to get processed, it is going to throw an exception. So if we come into the CloudWatch and refresh this, we have the new log stream. So let's navigate into that. And here we can see we get the message count one and this has the exception. So this throws the exception message cannot be processed. In this case, this is throwing the exception, in which case the message would be put back into the queue and it would come back for processing. Now, how long this takes is basically depending on the queue setting. So if you look at the queue, if you navigate back and expand the property, we can see the default visibility timeout. This is currently set to 30 seconds. So anytime a message is read from this queue, it will be made unavailable for other consumers for 30 seconds. So if the consumer gets back to the queue and deletes it or says it has successfully processed, it will automatically remove the message from the queue. But if after 30 seconds, it doesn't hear back from a consumer, it will make the message available for other consumers. Now I cover these properties and these behavior in detail in my SQS video. So I highly recommend checking that out. But in this particular case, you can see after 30 seconds, the message will reappear on the queue and our Lambda function will again process it. So if we come back into the CloudWatch and refresh this, you can see this has processed it again. So you can see the received message count and it is again throwing an exception because the body is not changing. Now in a real world application, you might be talking to external services which are temporarily down. Now in this case of transient errors, when you retry, it might succeed the next time. But in our case, this exception is not going to succeed. This is because it's always going to have the word exception in the body and it's always going to throw that exception. Now, this might also be the case in a real business logic when we have not handled for nulls inside our code. So it might be always null and it'll always throw the exception. 
Now this message is going to be retried every 30 seconds by our lambda function. Now if you have more messages which has the word exception, this queue is going to grow bigger because it's going to keep on trying these messages. So in these cases, we want to move these messages into a different queue after a certain number of processing. So let's say we want to process five times and move this away to a different queue because we don't want to process it again by this function. We will have someone manually look at the message, see what the error is and do the needful. To configure that, let's navigate to our Amazon SQS. Let's collapse this. And under the dead letter queue, let's edit and add a new dead letter queue. Now for this, we need another SQS queue to be sent this messages. So let's go to the queues first and create a new queue. So let's click create queue. Let's choose this as user data DLQ, which stands for dead letter queue. Let's leave all the configuration as default and let's click create queue. So this is going to create a new dead letter queue. So let's come back to our original user data changes queue and let's click edit. Now inside here, let's scroll down and let's select the dead letter queue and enable this. Now we can choose a ARN. So let's choose the new queue that we have just created, which is the DLQ1, which is the user data DLQ that I just created. Now in this case, the maximum receives is set to 10, which means once we receive the message 10 times, that is processed by our Lambda function, it will be moved to this dead letter queue. Let's make this to a shorter value and make this as two and click save. So anytime the message gets processed for two times and it's unsuccessful, it will be moved to this dead letter queue. Now, since our message has already been processed a couple of times, it would be moved into the dead letter queue soon. So let's navigate to the dead letter queue. Let's say send and receive messages and let's click poll for messages. Once the polling is complete, you can see this message has appeared inside our queue. So if we click that, we can see the message body, which is test exception. Now in a real world application, you can look at this body and also the exception messages and see what is going wrong. Now in cases where it's a third party service that's down, you could retry these messages again after some time once the third party message is back up and running. Now if it's some case where you haven't handled your code, you can make changes to your code, push your Lambda functions and then replay these messages again. So let's click done for now. Let's leave these messages inside the dead letter queue and let's navigate back into SQS. Now in this case, we only saw one message because of which this was fine. But since the messages are delivered to our Lambda function in batches, we could have one of these messages fail, but the rest of them process through. So let's say we get five messages in a batch out of which one failed to process. But since we are throwing an exception, the Lambda would disregard the entire batch. So let's say you've processed through three of these messages and the fourth one through an exception. In this case, all five of the messages that you initially received would be given back to the queue and it would start reprocessing again. Let's see this in action. So let's click send and receive messages. So let's give test. Let's also type in the exception. Let's click send message and let's remove this and send another couple of messages which doesn't throw an exception. Let's again send a few that would throw an exception and let's mix and match this to trigger this batch which has a mix of messages. Let's come back to our CloudWatch. Let's navigate to the log group and let's refresh this. And here you can see, we have been got a couple of messages inside this. So you can see there is count of three, but all of them were with test. But one of them here was with the exception, but you can see this had two messages, but it only processed the first message, which was the one that had exception. So which means the second message does not even get processed and it returns the whole batch. Now after some time, which is 30 seconds in our case, it will get reprocessed again. So when building Lambda functions to process these message, you have to make sure they are item potent, which means it can handle the same message getting processed multiple times without having other side effects in our application. So let's for example, say you are deleting a record on the SQS message. And if the record is already deleted, then you would ignore that the next time you process the same message. 
However, Lambda functions also supports reporting batch item failures. So when your Lambda function encounters an error while processing a batch, by default, all the messages in that batch become available in the queue again. But to avoid reprocessing all the messages in a failed batch, you can configure the event source mapping, which is our Lambda trigger, to make only the failed messages visible again. So let's see how we can do that. So if we navigate back to our Lambda function, Let's go to our function.cs. So instead of returning a simple task, we can return an SQS batch response. Now this is a specific type where it specifies the errored records. So let's create this response and send it back as our function response. So let's create a new object. So let's say response is equal to new SQS batch response. So let's make sure to populate the properties, which is the batch item failures. So let's create a list of SQS batch item failure object inside that. So we can start adding the batch item failures as and when we process the message. So let's simply create this response object first and let's return it down below after the for each loop. So let's return the response object. Now anytime we are processing the message, if it throws an exception, let's add that message ID into the response. For this, let's simply wrap this processing using a try catch. So let's select this. Let's use control K S, which is the default shortcut to wrap. And let's choose try catch from here. So this is going to wrap with the try catch block. Now inside, whenever we have an exception, so let's make sure to log this as well. So let's say context dot logger dot error. So let's use the exception and then log the message. So let's capture the exception and let's say E dot message. Now we also need to append to the response. So let's create the response dot batch item failures and let's add a new item inside this. Now this is going to be a batch item failure object, which also needs a few properties populated. So let's create that and let's set up the item identifier. Now this is going to be the message dot message ID. So every time a message is going to be failed, we're going to add an item into the batch item failures with the message ID. So once we send back this request to the Lambda trigger, it knows which messages were successfully processed and which messages to remove from the queue. So in this case, if we get five messages and we process the first three messages, those would get removed from the queue. But the next two, if they fail, they will be added to this batch item failures and they will be left in the queue for reprocessing. So let's test this and see if this is working. So let's make sure to build. It's all building fine. So let's publish this again to our account. So let's say publish to AWS Lambda and let's click upload again. So this is going to upload the Lambda function and replace the Lambda function in our account. So let's navigate back. Let's go to the CloudWatch. Let's delete all the existing logs. So let's click delete and let's send a few more messages. Now to test our new batch reporting failures, let's again come back to our link pad. Let's update this to send a mix of exception messages and normal messages. So if E is divisible by three, let's make that as an exception case. So let's say E as percentage three equals zero. In this case, let's simply make this as dollar test exception and let's interpolate E as well. Now, if this is not the case, so let's say else, we can specify simply the test without the exception. So anytime the E is going to be divisible by three, it's going to have the word exception inside that. So let's reduce this count to 30 and let's send this again. Now, before we send these messages, we need to make sure our Lambda trigger is also updated to accept batch item failures. So if we navigate back into our Lambda function, so let's go into the configuration. So if you go into triggers, and edit this trigger, you can set this up inside here. So if we expand the additional settings, you can enable report batch item failures. So this allows the function to return a partial successful response for a batch of records. So let's make sure to check this and click save. Now, once that is updated, we should be able to run the query and see this in action. So let's make sure this is updating. So now this is enabled. Let's go and send the messages and see what happens. So in our CloudWatch, we don't have any existing messages. So let's come back to LinkPad and run this. 
So this has sent 30 messages of which a few of them would have the word exception. So let's come back to our CloudWatch. Let's refresh this and we have one log stream in here. So let's navigate into this. So you can see this has started receiving our messages. So in this particular case, you can see it has received count of seven of which the first four of them got processed successfully and only the one with exception three would have failed. The others would have again succeeded. So in this case, our Lambda function would have returned just the ID for that particular message. So it would have caught this exception, added it into the batch item failures and send this back in the response. Now, since we enabled on the trigger the batch item response, it would look at this response and keep only the messages with these IDs specified. So if we come back again to the queue and refresh this, we should be seeing the exception ones getting repeated after 30 seconds. So if we navigate back to this, there is also one more stream that has got created. So let's click view in log insights to see both of these streams in one view. So let's update the number of limit and let's click run query. Now, if you're completely new to CloudWatch, I show all of this inside my CloudWatch video, which you can check out on this series. There is a slight delay on the logs getting populated in log insights from the log groups. So after a few seconds, let's click run query again, and we should be able to see all the messages inside this. So this still has only caught up with a few records. So let's give it a refresh after some more time. We can also filter these messages inside the log insights. So let's say filter at message like, and we can simply give a value. So in this case, let's say processed message. So we can see all the log statements that just has this line. So let's run the query again, and you can see all the logs coming up here. Now, in this case, you can see there is an exception 30 coming here, and it's also repeated again down below. Similarly with exception 18, which is also got processed two times. And you can see all these messages appearing double times. But the messages which didn't have any exception got only processed once. This was because we reported back on the failure and only the ones with the exceptions are getting retried. Now, once these failure messages gets processed more than two times, which was the delivery count that we set up when we set up the dead letter queue, it will be moved into the dead letter queue. So if we come back to the SQS dead letter queue and poll for messages, we can see there will be more messages inside here. So if you look at the send time, you can see the latest messages. So if we expand this, you can see this is test exception three. Similarly, we would have other messages coming inside the queue. So test exception 24, etc. So if we come back to CloudWatch and run this again, you can see exception 24 has run already two times because of which it was moved to the dead letter queue. Now when setting up Lambda triggers, there is one last property that you need to know of. So if we click edit, we can also add filters to filter the messages coming inside the queue. Now this is simply a JSON filter. So you can click the learn more here and see the documentation on how to filter the messages. So let's say in cases where we want to only allow certain messages to go through. So let's say for example, a specific user ID or based on different message properties, you can create filters in here which means this will only allow those properties to go in. So if you send 10 messages for 10 different user IDs, and if you want to only specifically filter for one user ID, you can use that on this filter. Now I'll not go into detail about that, but you can look at this documentation and easily set up a filter for yourself. I hope this helps you to understand all about Lambda triggers when integrating with an SQS queue. We learned how to create a Lambda function, set up the trigger, and also the different properties on the trigger. We also learned what happens when an exception happens on a message and how to set up a dead letter queue for the SQS. The batch item failure reporting is an important feature which allows us to reprocess only the messages that has failed, especially when you're processing in batches. We saw how the Lambda functions scaled up and down based on the number of messages that was coming into the queue. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll also help me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.